This is the sci-fi TV series we shot using smartphones. The show, called Silent Eye, has had over a million views on Amazon Prime, being recommended to viewers alongside shows made on huge budgets. Part of our success was using settings via the camera app known as Filmic Pro to create what is known as the film look. So, how did we do it? People love films and people love the look of films. It's a look that's been tried and tested over the 100 years or more since cinema was invented. In the past, it used to be quite a task to reproduce the look of film without using any actual film, that is. But as digital cameras have improved year after year, it's getting easier and easier. And with great apps like Filmic Pro and MC Pro 24PS, we can certainly achieve a film look using our smartphones. I will also be using some Sandmark ND filters. They're also polarizing uh, filters to help when conditions are too bright to create the film look. But first, I think it's a good idea to understand the principles behind the film look. But if you just want to skip ahead to the app tutorials, I have timestamped everything below. Film has a dreamlike quality to it that video doesn't, unless you use certain settings and color enhancements. So when we try to create the film look, we attempt to emulate the key characteristics of film, but using a digital medium. In fact, this is quite an interesting question because many great films from the last century were shot in black and white and with a much more kind of square aspect ratio. However, these days, most cinema and TV is shot in some kind of widescreen format. Another characteristic of film is that it's mostly shot and projected at 24 frames per second. Then there's the 180 degree rule, which dictates that your shutter speed should be close to 1 over 48 or 1 48th of a second. Instead of digital noise, film gets kind of grainy when pushed to compensate for low light levels. How about a shallow depth of field? While this isn't a property of film itself exactly, most movies we know and love are shot using a variety of focal lengths. So some shots will have everything in focus, while others will have a kind of blurry background and bokeh. And while digital cameras and screens can produce 100% black and 100% white, film has noticeably less contrast than digital video. Blacks are a little bit faded, and whites more off-white. When it comes to colouring your video, some care needs to be taken not to overdo things. Taking the approach of subtle tweaks and aiming for a consistent look will help you create something truly cinematic. First thing is to set your frame rate to 24 frames per second. So open up camera settings in Filmic Pro and tap frame rate, and now tap 24. To make sure your shutter speed stays at 1 48th of a second, you can set it and lock it. So open up the manual controls by tapping this button here. It's kind of like a circle inside a broken circle. Now you have shutter speed on the left at the bottom and ISO at the top. Drag that wheel up and down until shutter speed says 1 48th. Tap it to lock it and it turns red. Now when you drag the wheel up and down, it only changes the ISO setting. We want to keep the shutter speed at 1 48th because this creates a nice motion blur in the image. Faster shutter speeds reduce motion blur and make the image look more harsh on the eye. Therefore, the only way you can now set exposure is by adjusting the ISO. So what do we do if it's bright and we can't lower ISO any further? Well, then our only option is to reduce the light hitting the sensor and most people use ND filters for that purpose. An ND filter blocks some of the light, a bit like putting sunglasses on your camera. And this allows you to reduce the light hitting the sensor without pushing shutter speed too high. Now, Sandmark sent me these to try out. Now they come with a clip, so they can be used with most smartphones, iPhone or Android. You can see that these are really nicely made. Even the clip, it's covered in rubber and it feels pretty sturdy too. This kit comes with three strengths of ND filter and a PL or polarizing filter attached. So I need to choose the one which will allow me to reduce the light without going so dark that I need to boost the ISO. I've already made a video going more into depth about the use of ND and polarizing filters. So, so check that out if you want to know more. 
When you come to colour your film, you really want as much information in the clip to work with as possible. So filming in 4K, for example, even if you intend to master at 1080p. Also the highest bitrate your devices that you're going to be working on can manage. In this case, Filmic Extreme. Some smartphones can now shoot in 10-bit color depth using Filmic Pro or MC Pro 24BS. Again, 10-bit gives you more information to work with when coloring your clips. Having said that, Silent Eye was shot in 2K using Filmic quality bitrate and in 8-bit color, so it's not absolutely essential. The standard aspect ratio is 16 by 9. That's kind of the default, but you might want to choose a more widescreen option. Now, if you toggle on crop source to overlay, then Filmic Pro will output your video at that ratio. And there's no need to crop when you come to edit. Smartphones use strong digital sharpening, which makes the video they produce look less like film. Generally speaking, film has a kind of soft look, and this is actually achieved through quite a few different methods. Film itself, as it's made of celluloid and chemical crystals, simply doesn't have the razor-sharp quality of an image created using electric sensors. So I believe this is only possible on Android devices, but in the settings screen, tap device and scroll to the bottom of the list. There, in Android devices at least, you will find two settings for noise reduction and sharpness. So just disable sharpness here. Personally, I have noise reduction on fast. Some people prefer to switch this off and use noise reduction on their editing software, but I find my Samsung devices have good noise reduction capabilities, so I use that, and it saves me some time. Like with Filmic Pro, we need to set frame rate and shutter speed. In MC Pro 24 FPS, frame rate is located by tapping the video recording settings. Frame rate and resolution are combined, rather than appearing as separate settings. The top setting is resolution, and FPS, which is frames per second. In MC Pro 24 FPS, you also get to choose if you want to shoot using the GPU or without. If you shoot without GPU, more processing power can be used by your device to capture the video. This also opens up other options in respect to shooting log video, as well as shutting off certain options. MC Pro 24PS is a bit like a puzzle sometimes. If you use this, you can't use that. If you enable one setting, then you can't use some other setting. So that's why there's a bit more of a learning curve with this app. Anyway, so we can switch through the available frame rates here. Tap to select 24 frames per second. But we're not finished until we select resolution as well. Scroll down the list of options until you find the desired resolution. I will choose 3840 by 2160, which is 4K resolution at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. MC Pro 24BS doesn't have the range of ratios available in Filmic Pro, but you can actually shoot using the full sensor. So with my Note 20 Ultra, I could choose up to 4000 times 3000 pixels, which gives me a 4 by 3 ratio. MC Pro assumes that if you want a widescreen ratio, you will crop the video yourself with your editing software. There's no disadvantage to doing this. In fact, this actually enables you to reframe your image when editing. If you want to use a safe area guide, then click the cog settings icon next to the camera icon. Scroll down to where you find the safe area control. Now you can switch through various options. And here we have that same 2.76 to 1 70 mm widescreen ratio. Now it doesn't actually output the video in this ratio, but it shows you how much of the frame will be cropped if you want to crop to this ratio later. Like it says, it's just a guide. So this will help you get your framing right when shooting. Once you tap the resolution, MC Pro 24 FPS sets your camera to 24 frames per second and whatever resolution you chose. Scroll down a bit and choose your bitrate. If you aren't worried about file sizes, then choose the highest setting before the red settings. Settings in red can be chosen, but they might be unreliable. MC Pro 24 FPS is pretty similar to Filmic Pro when it comes to setting exposure. By default, the app is set to auto exposure, so tap this M button to switch to manual. And now tap the up and down shutter speed arrows to set it to 148th. The control wheel only controls the ISO. 
but you can also set that using the up and down arrows. The wheel is for fine adjustment while the arrows make bigger steps. If you keep the video recording settings menu open, you can find more options. If I switch to the H.265 codec, my Note 20 Ultra is able to shoot in 10-bit color. Of course, you can also do this in Filmic Pro, which will give me more to work with later when grading. Of course, you will also get bigger files, and the H.265 codec is not yet as versatile as the old H.264 codec. If you're shooting in 10-bit, then it's a good idea to scroll down and toggle on Remove HDR Metadata. This metadata alters the image, usually to improve the look. But when using an app like Filmic or MC Pro 24PS, this metadata can cause problems with your editing software. So keep scrolling down this same menu, and now you'll find those noise reduction and sharpness controls. Again, I use the same as I use in Filmic Pro, fast noise reduction and sharpness off. As I said previously in this video, in general film has a soft look, and this is created by setting your shutter speed to give you a nice motion blur. You know, blur equals softness. Also, you can switch off sharpness in Android devices, but apart from that, how else can we create a soft image? One of the most common ways is to use a shallow depth of field. Now, I've already made a video showing all the ways you can shoot a shallow depth of field using a smartphone. For example, you can use a depth of field adapter like this one from Ulanzi. A possible downside is that this reduces a lot of light hitting the sensor. So while that's an advantage in bright conditions, it's a bit of a serious drawback when shooting in low light. Another way to soften the image is to use a diffusion filter. I use these that I bought from Tiffin, and these are used by professional cinematographers to soften the edges between the dark and light areas. So they reduce contrast, which creates a softer image and is more flattering when, for example, shooting close-ups of people's faces. Again, I made a whole video about how to use a diffusion filter, so check that out if you want a more in-depth look at these kind of filters. So I don't believe you can remove sharpness when shooting on an iPhone. However, you can add a little softness in a video editor. I edited all five episodes of Silent Eye using Adobe Premiere Pro, and one of the settings in Lumetri Color is sharpness. So if you slide this to the negative, maybe about 10 or 20 points, the image softens and looks more like film. Another thing I mentioned earlier is less contrast, so I generally push the gain in the shadows here, about 10 or 20 points. And this makes the blacks less black and more like film. You can also, if you want to, just pull the highlights down a little bit. When it comes to choosing a colour for your film look, there's no real rule. But just don't overdo it, because if you push the colours too much, it looks too unnatural, and then that takes people out of the film. So if you want to find out more about how we made the Silent Eye series, we have set up a Patreon page where you will get exclusive access to the full resolution versions of each episode. I've also recorded five making of podcasts where I go through step by step the challenges we faced shooting each episode. So in the future, I'll be adding all the behind the scenes photos and videos. Plus, I'm going to go more into detail about how we got the episodes onto Amazon Prime how many views we got, and other analytics, plus how much money we made from being on Amazon Prime. And if there's demand for more detailed tutorials and so on, I will include those in the future. And if you just want to dip in, watch the episodes, and listen to the podcasts, it's about $5 all in. And then all you have to do is just cancel your subscription before the next month. And so, you'll, yeah, simple as that. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.